130 years ago this spring, a remarkable achievement in American science and technology came to light just two blocks from here. On an April evening, thousands of people gathered at Public Square, where a series of 150 poles had been erected. Powered by a nearby dynamo, the poles sprang to life with a bluish purple brilliance that blanketed the square in light. A band played, horses reared up, an artillery squad fired a celebratory salute, and a new era dawned for America's urban areas. A reliable system of electric streetlights had been born, and the Washington Post announced the death knell of the gaslights. The 30-year-old inventor of this public lighting system was, as you may know, Charles Francis Brush of Cleveland. His name and ingenuity were prominent throughout the region in the 19th century, and his electric lighting system was soon illuminating the streets of New York, Montreal, San Francisco, and dozens of other North American cities. Brush lights made neighborhoods safer, allowed families to take after-dinner strolls, and brightened retail districts until way, late into the evening. They also made Charles Brush a millionaire. What you may not know is that Charles Brush was a graduate of the University of Michigan. <laughs> he came to Ann Arbor for an engineering degree, and he took courses in chemistry and mathematics and mechanics, but also in rhetoric, history, and French. He earned his degree in less than three years by going to school continuously and attending summer classes. Charles Brush ushered in a new era of technology for our country, using the talents he developed growing up in Cleveland and the knowledge he gained by studying at the University of Michigan. As a scientist and an entrepreneur, he helped society transition from one energy technology to another, and in doing so, transformed our way of life. Whether in the Victorian era or the digital era, research universities prepare people to solve society's problems. And those problems are more than abundant here in the Midwest where our industrial centers are struggling, our traditional economies are in a state of flux, and our citizens are anxious about the future. Research universities excel at creating solutions for the future. At Michigan, by drawing on our vast and unique strengths in education and innovation, and finding partners outside our traditional academic comfort zones, we will be a beacon of progress for America in the 21st century. I was eager to accept your invitation today because our respective regions and states have so much in common in terms of achievements and challenges. Here in the Midwest, we are home to great universities, cities that built themselves on hard work, beautiful lakes and shorelines, and a tapestry of cultures and ethnicities that make our communities vibrant. You have much to be proud of here in Cleveland, which has dedicated itself to reinvention. From the arts to the health sciences, Cleveland is emerging as a real jewel in the Great Lakes region. We also have our challenges, and at the top of the list is the economy. The Midwest is not alone in this malaise, but we are often the national poster child for the economic downturn because of our manufacturing heritage and the difficult transition that we are making to a knowledge-based economy. The state of Michigan is, of course, home to the auto industry. We are proud of our contributions to the American and world economies through the vehicles and the spin-off technologies we design and build. But we are undergoing a dramatic transformation in our state and throughout the Midwest. No longer can children grow up knowing that a well-paying job with benefits awaits them at the local assembly plant. No longer do mid-level managers plan careers with and devote loyalties to one company. And no longer do executives fret just about next year's model, but next year's also next year's health care costs and pensions. The state of Michigan, much like Ohio and Indiana and Illinois, is being forced to reinvent an economy built on new knowledge and innovation. A year ago, the Brookings Institution issued a detailed report 
on the Great Lakes region and our role in North America's economic leadership. It made a point of our history with bustling ports and factories in cities like Cleveland, Detroit, Milwaukee, and Chicago. With that industrial growth came an enviable range of colleges and universities, and it is the work of these institutions, including the University of Michigan, that will help our region right itself for the demands of the 21st century. We should take great pride in knowing that the Great Lakes region is home to more of the world's top-ranked universities than any comparable region around the globe. When Shanghao Zhao Tung University, one of China's leading research universities, created a list of the 100 best universities in the world, 20 of them are here in the Great Lakes region. That's one in five world-class institutions in our backyard, more than in the Northeast with the likes of Harvard and MIT, and more than along the West Coast with UCLA and Berkeley. Case Western is on the list as is Ohio State. The Brookings Institution called this generous locus of knowledge an unrivaled center of innovation, education, and talent generation, one rich in research, development, and new ideas. We have a bit of a building boom going on in Ann Arbor. Over the past five years, our university has committed $2.5 billion and almost 5 million square feet of new space to life sciences research, education, technology, engineering, and we believe economic growth. Most recently, we purchased the former headquarters of Pfizer, the drug maker whose global R&D operations were housed in Ann Arbor until 2007. With 177 acres and 2 million square feet of space, built space, this will be one of the largest expansions of the university in more than half a century and will allow us not only to broaden our contributions as one of the nation's premier research universities, but also to strengthen the region's stability to stimulate and its ability to attract new business. At this new site and elsewhere across our campus, we're investing in stem cell research, new forms of energy, biomedicine, nanoscience, because we believe it's the future for our state and our region. And we just and just as we are investing in these important areas, others are investing in us. The university's research portfolio is one of the strongest in the country because of the support of business and industry, philanthropists, and most important, taxpayers like you. In the most recent fiscal year, our sponsors provided more than $875 million to support our scientists and researchers. And our donors have demonstrated a level of giving never before seen at a public university. Our recently completed capital campaign, as Don said, our, in that campaign, our alumni and friends contributed, our final to total was more than 3.2 billion. <laughs> but more impressive is the fact that 60% of the money raised came from out of our state, from California and Illinois, and here in Cleveland where our donors contributed more than $30 million. I know we have alumni in the room with us today, including members of our Cleveland Major Gifts Committee, and I want to thank them for their faith in Michigan. This is a tremendous level of investment, and I do not know of any other organization in our state, public or private, that attracts these kind of dollars. Our benefactors could have put their money anywhere, in their churches or synagogues, in the Lions Club or the Humane Society, but by choosing to commit to our university, they are investing in the future. This infusion of support heightens our responsibility and our determination to produce results through our research, our technologies, and our service. That's why we are changing ourselves to amplify the impact. For example, we have a new hiring program to attract 100 junior faculty who specifically excel at teaching and research that crosses academic boundaries. The world is not divided neatly into academic disciplines that for so long have been a part of our campus culture, and these new professors will be well suited for addressing complex issues in technology, the environment, public policy, and other areas. The research and the students they teach and mentor will make a difference. And we're nurturing a campus culture of entrepreneurship, 
where we encourage faculty, staff, and students to push the envelope with innovative ideas for the marketplace. This entrepreneurial spirit showed its power this last semester with a competition we called 1,000 Pitches. It was a campus-wide initiative we hoped would produce 1,000 new business proposals from students eager to share their ideas and their discoveries. We were worried that we would not receive 1,000 ideas. But, in fact, we received 1,044 ideas, hundreds upon hundreds of proposals for new businesses, inventions, and nonprofit organizations, all pulled together in three months' time and posted on YouTube. One student proposed using cell phone technology to design a system that translates sign language into speech and vice versa. His innovation joined such diverse proposals as one that converts wastewater into, bio, into biodiesel fuel, and another that designs low-cost surgical lamps that are reliable in operating rooms in developing countries. 1,000 Pitches was a fabulous, engaging demonstration of students' creativity and the potential to innovate skills that will be paramount as they move on from Michigan. Our graduates, and there are nearly a half a million of them, are our best ambassadors as they transfer the knowledge they gain to, on campus to communities around the goal, globe. For our faculty, we are accelerating our technology transfer efforts to encourage and reward professors who move their inventions and innovations from the lab to the marketplace. In the past five years, the creations of our faculty have generated 50 startup companies. That's a new business opening its doors every five weeks. One new company every five weeks. And speaking of opening doors, we've established a business engagement center with the express purpose of better connecting the university to business and community partners. We are committed to helping attract, retain, and nurture high growth companies in our area. And this office is a bridge between our students and faculty and the growing industries in our region. The demand for ass assistance is exploding. I hope that I'm giving you a sense of activity rippling across the campus. We believe we can do no less in this climate of uncertainty and anxiety. Hands-on engagement and supporting economic development is atypical of U of M in a historical sense, but we are energized and we are enthusiastic about what we can offer our region now. But we cannot do this alone. Our two states are home to great sports teams and traditions, be it the Buckeyes, the Browns, or LeBron. Ohioans love their players and their teams. And in Michigan, we rally behind the Red Wings, the Tigers, the Pistons, and of course the Wolverines. We cheer our teams on because we enjoy seeing individuals pull together to produce a winning effort. We love the energy of collaboration because bringing together diverse strengths produces results. It does not mean sacrificing leadership. It means enhancing it. That is why I believe so strongly in alliances at the University of Michigan, because as leaders, we must find new partners, new teammates to expand our successes. That includes a new enterprise we call the University Research Corridor, where North Carolina has its research triangle and Northern California, Silicon Valley, the state of Michigan now has the University Research Corridor. Our university is joined with Michigan State and Wayne State and Detroit to create a team committed to advancing the region's economy. Think about Case Western, the University of Akron, Ohio State coming together as partners, and you'll have a sense of what the University Research Corridor is. Now, there's no doubt that our universities have our rivalries. No one enjoys beating Michigan State more than do I. <laughs> but the URC is about the real playing field, the global economy, and our state's role in it. By combining the research muscle of these three institutions, we are saying to the people of Michigan, we are making our state stronger. The University Research Corridor generates more than 69,000 jobs and $13 billion in economic impact. We are a jobs magnet that is growing ever more powerful. 
In the past seven weeks alone, the URC has announced five projects that could lead, that could lead to almost 18,000 new jobs. That includes a decision by IBM to locate a global computing center at Michigan State and a move by a Massachusetts firm to locate in metropolitan Detroit to build advanced batteries for hybrid and plug-in vehicles. This growth is made possible by working with our cities in our state, and it comes on the heel of attracting what you might call two anchor companies. Google selected Ann Arbor for its first office outside of Silicon Valley, and Aeronova, a Spanish aerospace firm, opened a North American center in town because of our strong engineering culture. Students in our aerospace engineering program like to wear a t-shirt that says, as a matter of fact, I am a rocket scientist. <laughs> but you don't need an engineering degree to appreciate the power of research universities to propel the economy. Attracting companies like Google and Aeronova acutely demonstrates how the University Research Corridor can and does make our state a leader in supporting innovative and entrepreneurial firms. The URC is only two years old, and we are just now taking baby steps. I attended the University of North Carolina just as the research triangle was taking shape, and I returned to Chapel Hill many years later as an administrator and was pleasantly stunned by the collaboration between UNC, Duke, and North Carolina State. These partnerships take time, and I can't wait to see where the URC will take us. Collaboration, though, is our future. Whether we pull together scientists from opposite ends of our campus or opposite sides of the country, we must call upon our best people to develop solutions for the future. Academe is known for saying publish or perish. I say partner or perish. We need our fellow universities and their niche strengths. We need our local industries and the opportunities they provide students and faculty. We need our donor support, and we desperately need our state legislatures to sustain and increase the funding that allows us to move forward to a flourishing future. I began today by talking about Charles Brush and his gift of innovation. After he made his fortune, he built an imposing stone mansion along Euclid Avenue, where the Red Cross now stands. He powered his home with a wind turbine, a towering windmill that was more than six stories high. And over the course of 20 years, it provided all the energy necessary for his three-story home. He was a true pioneer in alternative energy. And I think he would be pleased to know that his alma mater is continuing such path-breaking work. He would certainly want to know. Professor Anne-Marie Sastry, who embodies all that we are committed to as a university dedicated to economic development. As was Mr. Brush, Professor Sastry is an engineer who focuses on alternative forms of energy. Her expertise is in battery technologies and how to best power the plug-in cars and trucks we need to distance ourselves from foreign oil. I mentioned how we're building partnerships in our students Professor Sastry created a graduate level program to train tomorrow's engineers in new energy systems. The program instills the value of being creative about transportation power and being leaders in clean energy technologies. I talked of trans tech transfer and startup businesses. Professor Sastry is the founder and CEO of Satki 3, a company designated by the state of Michigan as, an as a center for energy excellence meaning that it is viewed as a focal point for spurring alternative energy R&D in our region. Our state's leaders want Michigan to become the advanced battery capital of the world, and I believe Professor Sastry's company will help drive us there. And I've told you about how much we value partners. Just last month, General Motors announced it is collaborating with Professor Sastry to establish the Advanced Battery Coalition for Drive Trains that's A, B, C, D, on our campus. It's a multi-million dollar investment to test and design advanced batteries, as well as to train dozens of GM engineers to develop the next generation of electric cars. U of M alumnus Charles Brush lit up Cleveland and cities across the country with his invention. Anne Marie Sastry and thousands of Michigan faculty and students are collaborating with each other and with partners throughout the region to electrify our economy. 
Together, we are propelling the Midwest standing as a dynamo, a powerhouse of innovative growth and economic vitality where bright ideas light the way to a prosperous future. Thank you. Thank you.